Hello and welcome to this edition of Parent Quick Smarts for 5th grade. This episode will cover grade 5, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. In this unit, your child will be finding common denominators in order to add and subtract fractions. Previously in education, many times we were told how to manipulate the top number or numerator and bottom number or denominator on a fraction using a set of procedures that were memorized. Find the LCD, add, then find the GCF and simplify. Your student in fifth grade will still be using the least common denominator to add and subtract fractions and the greatest common factor to simplify. However, we will want them to explore prior to learning these procedures in order to understand why and when to use them as opposed to just being told to use them. We will first have our students explore different strategies to determine the LCD or least common denominator. Then they will use what they have learned about finding common denominators to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. And finally, add and subtract mixed numbers with regrouping or renaming. In order for our students to gain a deeper understanding of why we find a common denominator, they will first be challenged by their teacher with a problem-solving problem scenario. For example, last year Shauna planted two one-acre farms. In the first one there are three equal areas of corn and the other has four equal areas of beans. She plans to divide both gardens into more sections so that they have the same number of equal size sections. What is the least number of equal size sections each garden can have? Your fifth grade student may be asked to directly model the situation to explain how they would solve it. Through trial and error, the student should be able to discover that if we chop each of the thirds into four equal size pieces and each of the fourths into three equal size pieces, they would end up with a common size piece that is each one twelfth of the whole. So twelfths is a common size piece or denomination of piece size for both thirds and fourths. Students can see that by renaming these two fractions as twelfths, we are not changing the amount but calling it by a new name. Students would then be exposed to several ways that they could have come to a common denominator. For example, listing common multiples, or they could multiply the two denominators together in order to get the common denominator of 12. The students may justify being able to create smaller common size pieces for the equivalent amounts, such as 24 fourths or 48 eighths. However, the least number of common size sections, which is what the problem asks for, is 12 or the least common denominator. Once the students have a firm understanding of how to rename fractions with a common denominator, they will need to apply this to real-world situations in which they have to add and subtract these amounts. To solve the problem shown, the students would first determine a reasonable estimate to compare their final solution with. In this case, the students could round each fraction or mixed number to its nearest benchmark of 0, 1 half, or the next whole. 2 and 1 half is at the half benchmark. And 3 fourths could be rounded to either 1 half or up to the next whole. Both would be reasonably close. Remember, an estimate is just a quick reference point. If you use 1 half for your, for your estimate of 3 fourths, you would get about 2 pizzas left. If you used one whole as the estimate for three-fourths, you would get about one and one-half pizzas left. Both are reasonable estimates. Students would then be asked to use manipulatives to create a model that directly represents the situation in order to show how they would get their answer. With this scenario, a student may see that it would make more sense just to split one of the whole pizzas into fourths and then remove three of those fourths. Next, they could combine the amount that they had left with the half. Students could see that in order to pre precisely name the one half and one fourth left over, 
they would need to rename that same amount in terms of a common sized piece. The half can be split into two fourths. So they would have one and three fourths of a pizza left. However, we want our students to relate this model to a quick pick and then to the algorithm. If we look at a representational model or diagram for this solution, a student would be able to see that they do not have any fourths to remove, only a half. So they must find a common size piece between the fourths and the half. They can determine a common size piece efficiently by listing multiples in order to find the least common denominator. By renaming the half as our least common denominator of fourths, the student should next see that they can take away fourths, but there aren't enough to remove three fourths. So as they did in the model, they can rename one of the holes as four fourths, which could, would combine with the two fourths and give you a total of six fourths. You may be familiar with six-fourths as an improper fraction, but refer to it with your child as a fraction greater than, greater than one. This emphasizes that this is representing an amount greater than a whole unit as a fraction. Now they can subtract three-fourths from that six-fourths and determine that their solution is one and three-fourths of a pizza. Understanding how and why we regroup when we subtract is important. Some real-world examples you can use with your students are, are you interested in running or walking? Track the fraction of a mile or kilometer that you walk each day and have your child find the total amount that you walk or run each week. Here are some examples of problems that your student may be asked to solve as they progress through this unit in their GoMath text. Some questions that you may want to ask your child to help build their understanding as they go through this unit are justify why you do not add denominators when you're adding fractions. Describe the steps you take to find the sum or difference of fractions with unlike denominators. Explain how you know you must rename one of the mixed numbers in order to subtract. Thank you for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, take a look at the, these websites, www.thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.